all right what's going on with my folks man uh today we back with another one uh practical civilian we're gonna be going over why i set up my gpr how i did and uh just some parts list uh stuff why i chose what i do how i you know the functionality the uh, function over fashion you know and does my rifle look good let me know in the comments below stay tuned past the intro all right y'all so um how i had my rifle set up last time um and a couple things that i've been playing with um basically i took off this uh mall c1 plus um a because i'm gonna be putting this on my spr um special purpose rifle um and i had to take it off my gpr because this doesn't serve that one purpose or the the multiple multitude of purposes that i had uh set aside for my gpr um what i mean by that is basically i didn't need the ir because i don't have my night vision set up yet um a and b these batteries die pretty easily you can see i put the extension on there um and as to add double a's but these have a parasitic drain so overall they last me probably like two weeks on a charge of double a batteries that's why i had to get the rechargeables um but with the normal cr 123a's or whatever um they last like a week maybe um and i don't like that that's a no bueno for me i don't want to have to feel like i always got to charge something especially on a rifle that i'm you know uh using pretty frequently i don't want to have to feel like i have to check it every time i go to the range or whatever just to test it um also it does have two separate switches and i think you could program them to slave them um and all of that stuff and it is reversible like you can take this off and put it in the front and all of that i don't need all of that for this uh and this thing is heavy it's adding a lot of weight especially to the system that i chose uh the jackal system is already front heavy because of the gas block and everything so i didn't need more weight up front and yes i probably could have moved it back more but where the charging handle and everything sits, you can't really add stuff in front of that. So I wanted to basically just get something that can fill the void of this and also this. So this is a dedicated uh, light that I had, this uh, TLR1 uh, rifle switch. I don't know what it's called, um, but basically it has this switch on it that you can actuate like that. You can strobe it real quick or um you can actually plug it in and get a tape switch and, and do that um so that was what i had as my dedicated light because this light is weak it's probably like 200 lumens maybe that's a thousand so i needed something that could do both and i'm still testing this but this is how i currently have a setup uh, i'm taking it to the range a couple times and um, you'll see why i chose what i chose uh, but i've been playing around with this this is the ACSS uh, 1X Cyclops. The reason why I was playing with that and I took off this is because stigmatisms, astigmatisms. Basically, uh, when I, where's my illustration? When I see a red dot, I don't just see a normal dot. I usually see something like this. Um, it's not a dot at all. It's like a squiggly line, looks like a, like a starfish sometime or it's like a starburst pattern type of thing. And uh, I needed a prism. So, uh, prisms are etched in the glass, so you always see the actual uh, what what it's saying. I wish they had like an etched red dot. Anyways, um, I needed something for my GPR that also has like steady lines for ranging, um, because you know if I was gonna get it, then I was gonna add a magnifier to it, and that's basically the only reason I didn't put this on my GPR is because. I'm probably going to use this instead of like a red dot uh, in in substitution for red dot uh, because the eye relief for this is like so short you got to have it like probably two maybe two and a half inches from your face and there's no magnifier that you can put in front of that on the rail that you can actually be able to still see this effectively at least me still see this effectively and still be able to flip the magnifier in front of it and range it out now you could always have it magnified but then at that point it's just an lvpo you know that's the that's the purpose that the low variable power optic um that's the that's the purpose that they serve so you know i had to uh take this off of there and this is a hefty boy way heavier than this red dot this lowly cheapy red dot whatever um by the way 
don't let nobody tell you that you can't run something cheap i paid like 40 bucks for this and it's lasted like five years you can see i got some wear and tear on it and it held zero so you know y'all can kiss my ass i don't care what y'all be saying what type of red dot it's my red dot does it matter what type of red dot you get you got if you hit in the face no you're not gonna be like oh man i can die in peace now because i died from an eotech or nah man i can't die i gotta live because i can't die from no no cheap hollow son shut up it doesn't matter your dead is dead bullets is bullets red dots is red dots if it works it works it's not like i have a reciprocating mass or something like it's, it's gonna f hit something and die like i said i've had it for like five years whatever i don't care what you f people say in the comments because when y'all yeah, don't have that same energy when i see y'all in real life simple the internet is not a real place and i'm i'm <laughs> i'm yeah anyways uh back to what i was saying so this one has the stadia lines in it so it's got the ranging what i mean by the ranging lines is basically uh it's got the circle and then the chevron the tip of that is a range and then you got under that is uh, a certain range i want to say it's like 50 and then 75 100 i don't know um i lost the manual i got the box but i lost the manual so i do not know let me see if i can find it uh on the box uh, okay so the tip of the chevron is infinite precise center chevron the two uh is the basically the circle is the cqb optimized horseshoe which is it makes sense because that's the first thing your eye draws to is that that circle that half circle or three-fourths circle whatever and then a three are the target target ranging ladder it doesn't say what they are probably says it in the manual but you know i'm gonna be playing with this on something separate uh probably my 11.5 that i'm working on maybe my 10.5 uh definitely not my 7.5 but something that's going to be longer going to be taking this out to a, a little bit of a range and we're going to see we're going to see how that works but this is hefty had to take it off so this is what i settled on not settled this is what i came up to um and i know this is pretty busy for a lot of people but this is actually pretty lightweight for me for what i can handle um and it's crazy how people be like that rifle's too heavy well don't set your rifle up like that simple set yours up with iron sights and the red dot and that's it i don't care i set mines up to optimize my use of my rifles simple everything i have on here serves a function right for instance people be saying why don't you have a fixed stock on your your jackal because i like folding my stock especially when i'm going in and out of vehicles i like folding my stock and i like folding it for storage sometimes i'll rock this thing in a bag uh, going to the range or not and i need to fold my stock and in a pinch i might need to shoot it without folding my stock back so yeah but let's go uh just talk about some stuff that i've added you've all seen the uh lunar concepts hot pocket that i got to defeat the heat on my hand from burning me and feeling like i am ascended to the pits of hell um, but i have added i put my iron sights forward um, and I had to redo this video because I actually had them on backwards. Uh, I put them forward of the red dot because I needed all this rail space back here. By the way, there's a lot of rail space back here not used. If the Jackal used that little rail space right there and up here, because it has some in the front that I'm not going to be able to show for real, uh, that's unused, that'd be pretty, pretty dopelage popelage. Just to me, my personal opinion, I'm pretty sure they did that because like in a normal... Ugh, in a normal uh thing they have the big gap right there but they don't have one in the front it goes all the way to the front but they have the gap right there so i think that's why they did it to simulate that but i don't know i'm not a part of the design team so i don't know uh another thing that i added was the as you can see the black multicam sling to go along with the black multicam uh lunar concepts handguard and I like it. It's been holding up pretty good. I had to add my own cutie swivels to it, but I got some more that's uh, going to be testing and evaluating different. 
rifle attachments different ways to attach your sling to the rifle i think these qds are pretty nice just because it's built into the handguard and how i'm running it in the back it's actually looped through the uh through the stock so i like that other than that uh normal phase 5 ambi um i've been talking about that i got like three videos on that um and i did end up getting a uh monstrum tactical light mount for this laser light now why did i choose this specifically well a couple reasons um it's a thousand lumens when i need the light uh, i can toggle through the light and laser with just this switch right here so i can go light laser or laser light uh with just the switch and i can actuate it one-handed without using the tape switch now some people might see that as a down uh but i'm up we up uh, i see it as an upside because i can actuate it actually with me just with just my firing hand like this so it's just a normal grip that i have i'm on my pad which this would be the pressure pad pressure pads can be activated and it'll kill your batteries and i didn't want to add more weight to this it's already busy enough so basically from here all i gotta do is reach up a little bit and i can't do it at this angle because i'm trying to show you but uh, basically i just reach up a little bit like that and then you just play with that dang and then if i do it two times fast it'll strobe so you know i always said if i was gonna uh if somebody was gonna die they die like this because they stroke anyways my jokes aren't funny but i did add that to it um and i have it like there's a a little bit of like play with that button uh which i don't like but I like that I can keep it like right before it hits the light and I can have it right there so that way all I gotta do is bam and that's it bam that's it bam 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 I am a child all right <laughs> do that a little bit more um and then I added the 20 rounder in this because I've been playing with the uh AAC blade so I have um, instead of doing a 30 and then I have to do one box of 20 and then 10 from another box I just do the 20 rounders a they look better they're easier to use with the bipod extended um, and I like using specialty rounds so this helps me and allows me to uh, label my my mags and only use one box of some type of ammo so that I can know if it's good I personally don't like 10 shot groups I'll use them and test them if the ammo is pretty expensive but if not I'm doing 20 round groups because it gives you more data you know more more shots on target means more data pretty much and the mean potatoes of this uh review a slash whatever i want to call this thing i don't know um i'm gonna be talking about this in my it might be my next episode of free thoughts i don't know i'm installing a whole bunch of this loctite and this stuff and all of that stuff but there's basically a rail under here just a regular picatinny rail uh picatinny rail is this in case you guys don't know it's this type of rail 1913 rail same thing and um i took the screws out and i loctited all of them so that it can't go anywhere because i need that to hold zero and then i was gonna get a because this takes normal acog mounts which is a big plus because they have like the biggest those and t1 mounts which is like the aim point mounts biggest aftermarket support ever i was gonna get a midwest uh one with two levers but i'm like this is pretty flush as you can see it's pretty flush so it's not too much going on as far as the mount goes as you can tell from that profile that side profile oh look at the muscles hold on Ooh. anyways you can see it's not too much and the levers would have added weight as well which i'm trying to save as much weight on this thing as i can it's already heavy uh to most but to me it's pretty uh manageable i ain't gonna say it's lightweight by far but it's pretty manageable i also added a anti-glare uh lens to this which was like an extra 30 bucks uh, i got a steal on this optic by the way uh i got it for like almost 200 bucks it was like 180 uh bought it on ebay I've, I've been wanting this uh something like this optic for a while but i finally pulled the trigger no pun intended and got it and then i just had this extra hollow sun 508t it's the one that's only green and it's titanium it gotta be the 508t because i think the 509t is enclosed i don't know which would have been better but that would have added more weight wait 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 i've been talking about it a lot but yeah so i got the strike industries rex rail on here rex cage i think it's the 
reflex exoskeleton the rex i think this is just called the rex it's, it's this right here man it's this right here this thing right there it takes like six or seven different red dots so that's pretty cool and it comes with its own uh indexing bosses if you know what that is if you know you know other than that though i got like the normal um the normal controls and stuff but what makes my gpr better than most is a few things number one is like i said i can actuate my laser light just by moving my thumb a little bit i'm not trying to uh blind you that's why i haven't did that a i can do that just by moving my thumb so i don't even have to come off target or really move my hand it's just like a slight bend slight bend in my thumb uh number two i have very good ranging capabilities with this most gprs i see have like lvpos and uh that's definitely heavier than what i have on there right now um but if i want to go from short range to long range all i have to do when i'm on sight picture is lift up my chin a little bit lift up my chin lift up my chin and it's not as steady as it would be if i had my whole face on it like this but um if all those fails i still can shoot close range with my 5x if i want i just wanted something dedicated with no magnification that i can really just you feel me and another big uh i know i'm like going through all these big uh super life-changing things that you need for this gpr setup another thing uh lens covers not really another thing is the adjustable uh picatinny mount so once it's locked tight in place yes it's cool uh but i actually raised mine up just so that i can get that closer um not closer uh taller um to my optics so that i can see it better um because this eye relief on here i'm not sure if i have it tuned right and it does have an adjustable uh diopter so you can adjust your eye relief um it's been pretty good for me so far but i did have to uh raise my stock up and raise my stock in so usually i have it uh where the crook of my elbow is usually i have it probably three or four notches out and this is like two in i had to get a little closer just to get more focused on that and i had to raise it up one notch so the barrel isn't exactly in line with the stock but because it's above it it's not gonna really affect recoil i don't think because i don't really have that much up or down recoil it's really just uh straight back and not up or down or side to side it's really just straight back so i think that will help with that um and then uh, the manipulations with this thing is really easy because the charging handle is like right where I put my hand So if I need to press check all I have to do is rotate it My thumb is already there on the charging handle. All I have to do bam. I'm on target Bam. Now I know what some people are gonna say. Why didn't you? Um, just get a um, uh, Side mount like a 45 degree mount for your red dot so you can tilt it like that I watched a couple videos on hide over bore and I don't think with this being a taller system because the rail is way taller because I have to have room for that charging handle at the top with this rail being way taller I don't think there is a mount that's really gonna help me align the barrel with an offset I probably have to custom make one to be honest and by then it's not worth the money that I'm putting in when I got this for like sub 500 it probably cost me like 200 just to make a new mount and then plus a dot and then i gotta probably get another one of these to mount it to so by then what's the point you know i'm already uh, a lot of money into this now how much did this thing cost i'm still sub two thousand dollars into this thing i would say that i'm probably three thousand in worth of mistakes like what to do how to set stuff up what parts fit what and blah 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 but I would say let's see the jacket was nah, blah, 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 blah. the upper was 950 with the adapter I already had the lower um, the ambi charging handle was probably I don't know like 50 bucks 60 bucks um, so I would say I'm, I'm about 1500 and probably 16 or 1700 actually um, with the sights and everything and the stock and all of that so probably like sub sub 2000 still which i think is pretty good for a gpr because a lot of people who build gprs um they're sub 2000 off rip just with the scope and the rifle so 
I think I did pretty good, but let me know what y'all think in the comments down below. What would y'all change and how are you running your GPR? Let me know in the comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe, all of that stuff. Stay tuned for more. We got more coming. Peace. Sorry, this is Practical Editor here. Um, I forgot to mention my sling. I don't know where I got it from, but I got I do got this pretty cool tab that I wanted to mention. Um, as well as um, I'm running 20 rounders in here because uh, I like the look of them. They fit the bipod better when I got it dropped. And it doesn't really add to the profile. It can run 30s. But I've been running um, some, some of that AAC Black Tip Saber and the Sierra Match King, which is... Um, I'm not gonna say it's expensive, but it's a little costly for sure. Um, just so you know what I'm talking about. They run of these right there, the black tips. Um, but it's been, you know, running pretty fine, but I've been just been testing them. So my test magazines are usually 10, five or 20 rounders. I usually don't test in 30s just because uh, I'm running prone usually when I'm testing just to get more stable or I'm usually running my bipod. So side note for that, but yeah, for this GPR, I'm definitely running 20s. Um, dedicated 20s for sure i might get some lancers just so you can see get some clear ones so you can see you can see the magic you can see the magic like disney mountain but let me know what y'all think in the comments down below like and subscribe all that stuff and stay tuned for more we got more coming also at a thousand subscribers i'm dropping a new channel so stay tuned for that peace